Hi everybody, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloyTutors.com and in this video we're going to look at types of formula. Now types of formula is a very important concept in chemistry right the way through from AS to A2 um, and it is integrated within many questions within chemistry so it is really important that you're able to uh, understand what these different types of formula are um, and in this short video I'm going to show you the different types of formula that we have uh, and what they look like as well. And um, I just want to kind of point this out to you as well, that um, when you have them in questions and they will ask, for example, give the molecular formula of or show the displayed formula of or write the empirical formula, um, they will be integrated within the question. And so you are expected to be able to write the right formula. Otherwise, even if you've written the right molecule down, if it's not in the right form, uh, then you won't get any marks, unfortunately. So um, with a bit of luck, we should be able to um, get that one solved. So, if we start off with molecular formula, now the molecular formula basically shows you how many atoms you have in your molecule. It's the basic formula that you would see um, every day. So, for example, you might have something like ethanol, uh, and ethanol is given the formula C2H5OH. And you can see molecular formulas also show you clearly the functional groups that are involved in your molecule as well. And uh, you could have, for example, ethane, so you might have C2H6. Uh, and that's ethane. Again, um, there's no functional group written on here because uh, ethane only has um, single bonds in it, so there's no actual proper functional group. But within the alcohol, you can see there that this is clearly an alcohol uh, and not something like an aldehyde. So if we look at the next one, which is the structural formula. Now, the structural formula shows you the basic structure of your molecule. Um, it follows very similar from the molecular formula, except we're breaking up um, our molecule into, into carbon chunks. So for example, if we have ethane, uh, sorry, ethanol, which is over there, and um, we can write that as a structural formula, we can write it like this. So we do CH3, CH2, OH. And you can see what we've done is we've broken it up into CH chunks. Uh, and it just allows us to see um, our structure a little bit better, um, and we can see exactly what's going on. Again, we can see we've got our functional group on there, uh, it just makes it um, clear what our functional group is. So again, if it was, if it was something like ethane, um, which is this one here, then that would just be CH3, CH3. So you can see the structures that we have there, and that's what we're looking for for structural formula. Um, a displayed formula uh, is, again, is a little bit more um, involved, um, except displayed formula, you've got to display all of your bonds. Um, and this can take a uh, short while to write out, it's a little bit more long-winded, but it's very clear the displayed formula shows the clarity and exactly where bonds are, where your functional groups are, uh, and it helps just for, for, for pure clarity, it's easy to read. So for example, if we draw the displayed formula of, again, ethanol, then you would have um, your two carbons there, hydrogen, hydrogen, and all your hydrogens on there, and then you'd have O, bond, H. And the crucial thing is uh, some people can kind of cut corners where they miss out the bond between the O and the H, and they just write OH. And you've got to show every single bond between all of the atoms. Uh, and this can be quite useful for when you're doing things like, you might have something like carboxylic acid, so you might have something like ethanoic acid, uh, and it just shows you exactly um, where your hydrogens are. And it also makes you... Uh, think about how many bonds around each carbon, and it, as you can see, it shows you very clearly um, where all your atoms are. So that's your displayed formula. Your skeletal formula is actually very useful in organic chemistry, particularly if you're, if you're drawing long molecules. So for example, um, if you were going to draw something like octane, octane has eight carbons in it, um, and it would take quite a while to draw it with all your carbons and your hydrogens. Um, so instead, what we do, with every carbon and hydrogen link, we actually um, draw just a line. So if we start from here, if we start from the dot there and we go up like that, then this point on here effectively means that we have a CH3 because it's a terminal carbon. Uh, and on here, we have a CH3 as well. So you can see we've got two carbons. So that would be the skeletal formula for ethane. Now, obviously, that looks a bit weird because it's just a line. But skeletal formulas, like I say, come into their own when you start to draw long hydrocarbon chains. So, for example, you might have, uh, if it was octane, you'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points on there. And you start from here and you count that as point one. So 
So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so that shows us our skeletal formula of octane. And the assumption that we make is that at each point on this zigzag is a carbon with some hydrogens on it as well. And you can use this for alkenes as well. Again, so if we had to do um, oxbonine, um, then we can do, um, we can start off as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we can put our double bond on the end. And that shows that we have an alkene. Um, and they're also very useful for cyclic compounds as well. So, for example, if you were going to draw cyclohexane, um, cyclohexane has got uh, six points on it. So you just draw a hexagon. So you draw one, two, three, four, five, and then six carbons. And then you join that one up that we've done before. So you can see that we have six points on there. So that is effectively six carbons in a cyclic ring. And so that makes it a lot quicker and a lot easier to draw as well. And you'll see this quite a lot, particularly in A2, um, but you may see um, some of the molecules in AS as well. Okay, so the empirical formula um, is, um, there's actually a video on empirical formula and how you can work it out. So if you're not sure on how you work out empirical formula, then you just click on the link below and you can find out a little bit more about empirical formula. But it's basically the simplest whole number ratio of atoms. So, for example, if we had something like benzene, which might be C6H6, and um, which is uh, normally is found in petrol as an additive in fuel, and um, then your um, benzene can be simplified to an empirical formula of CH, because this is the molecular formula of benzene, uh, and its empirical formula is actually um, the simplest whole number ratio of that would be CH. Uh, and if we had to do it of, for example, if we had to do it for this one which is ethane, so we have C2H6, the simplest whole number ratio of that would be CH3. Now you might look at that and you might think, well that doesn't look right, uh, it doesn't chemically look right, and it doesn't, it isn't actually chemically CH3, all it's shown is, is the simplest whole number ratio of carbons to hydrogens. And then the last one is the general formula. Now general formula um, is quite useful, um, it shows you particularly if you want to try and write down the formula of long, very, very long uh, hydrocarbons. So, for example, the general formula for an alkane is Cn, and it's an algebraic way of showing it as well. So it would be Cn, H2n, plus, uh, plus 2. Now, the n bit stands for, the, obviously, is the number of carbons. So what we mean here is that if we have two carbons here, so it would be C2, then we would have two lots of two, which would be four, plus two, which would be six. So our formula for a, a hydrocarbon with two carbons in there would be C2H6. And so that's our general formula for an alkane. Uh, and you can also do it for an alkene as well. Alkenes obviously have two less hydrogens in the molecule compared to alkanes. So that's going to be CNH2N, uh, and that would be for an alkene. And you can see it's just an algebraic way of showing it. And it's useful because it means you can put in C150 in there, if you like, and you know that um, an alkene with 150 carbons, when it has one double bond, uh, would actually have 300 hydrogens on there. And you can tell straight away very quickly just by looking at the uh, general formula on there. Um, that's it, really. Um, make sure you get them right. Make sure you can draw them and you're thorough and you're meticulous when you're drawing your molecules. Uh, and take your time with them. But watch out for them in the questions and practice lots. That's it. Bye.